Hey everybody, it's Sai. Welcome to Crafting with Sai. Actually, it's a little bit of a dual thing, actually. It's plan with me, because this will eventually go into my planner. So I think I'm going to call it plan with me, um, just so that people who are following the series will not miss it. So as you can see, I've been working with my favorite Distress Inks by Ranger and Tim Holtz. So, um, I've been doing a lot of it already today, and I've come on the camera just to show you what I have been doing and then show you what I've done. But I'm just going to give you a quick short demo, um, because the amount of pages I've made, you did not want to have been watching that all day. So, let's move the ink out of the way. I'm working on a piece of glass. And taped to the piece of glass is a piece of paper, but it's taped to the other side. Um, and that is to give me a guide as to where I want my ink to go. And also, the white helps me to see it better. So, <laughs> I've been coloring pages to go in my planner. And these are the sizes. And so, um, these are not for every day. These are not for my sort of everyday, um, like, weekly spreads or anything like that. These are for pages that are going to spend a bit more time in the diary. Things that may even, you know, come with me across years and years. So it's it might be a bit laborious of a process to do for every page in your diary. But, you know, who am I to judge? So here's what I do. I've got, um, I've run out of actual paper that I'm using to, to make an actual page with. So pretend this is the same size. Okay, this is the paper we're going to be distressing. I've got that. I've got a heat gun, which is kind of like a hairdryer, but it does not blow air. Or the, the air current it blows, there's hardly any, basically. And um, so it won't move the ink around too much. It'll just dry the way it is. Let's see, what else? We've got our ink, we've got that, and we need a water spray. Now this is a teeny tiny one. It's a Tonic, um, a tonic Studios water sprayer. It takes such a small amount of water that I've been filling it up with a shot glass all day. And um, yeah, I think I, I basically used just a shot glass worth of water for my entire project. So we need the water. The water in increases the um, sort of movability of the ink, you know. I don't have to tell you, do I? Anyway, let's do something fun. Um, I, I do love peacock blue, so let's scribble just we take the pad we put it directly down onto our glass surface and scribble it and let's see let's put some purple here as well we like purple and now i wouldn't want to go with colors that don't mix well together at least not in the same go in the same um application if you see what I mean so let's do this so I've got my ink directly scribbled onto the surface I'm just going to get it wet with a couple of little spritzes of water it's going to beat up um, if you don't want it beaded up I've been playing with it with a little bit of a uh, like a palette knife and that's been kind of fun so I'm just gonna it's not that it won't beat up because it's glass but it's just uh now, I want to keep the colors separate, and I'll tell you why. Um, it's because they can get muddy. So let's just lay this paper down in this wet stuff, and just we'll move it just a little bit. And that gives us a little smeared sort of area. It's got some, some dribbles on it, which if you want to move them around, you can do. I kind of like, I like that it's dripping. I'm going to encourage it a little bit to drip down. And then I'm going to take that and I'm just going to give it a little blast with the heat gun. Now what this does is it kind of sets what you're doing. Um, now, you know, obviously like, you know, you want, I wanted the whole, I would have wanted the whole thing covered. If it's not, it's not a big deal. You're just drying off in between, okay? So that's 
more or less dry now, kind of. Yeah, more or less dry. Okay, and now what if I wanted to go into the opposite colors? If I hadn't dried it ahead of time, it would have gone all muddy and terrible. So let's see what happens if we just do this. Right. It's not horrific. It's um so you basically you're going to get some little blue patches on top of these purple patches here instead of a muddy blue purple. And that's what drying in between layers does for you. And if you are in the waste not want not squad, what I recommend you do is use, you know, your paper or another one, a different paper maybe. And just mop up all this extra ink, because there's lots here, isn't there? It sounds like someone's cutting a tree down outside. I'm sorry if you can hear that. This is the second. I've been up here for hours today. I've been tidying up my space. I've been making some projects. And now the sawing starts. Right when I start talking. <laughs> That's, fate. That's just fate, isn't it? Now, if you want to encourage drips, there's lots you can do. Um, if you want, you can um, you can just tap the edge and you know let some inertia do it. Or um, you can take. Um, they have these tools that have bulbs on the end that that will blow the ink around while it's wet and beaded. So that's kind of a fun thing you could do as well. But do you see how it's adding sort of layers of spots to the piece every time you go in here? So that's that's adding some there. And what you can do as well is you can move it. And that adds more of like kind of like a smear, a smear look to it. Um, so that's kind of fun. Now, this paper specifically, it's a funny old paper, and I've used all of it. Um, so I don't know what this is going to do. It's going to behave differently on every type of paper you have. This one has some kind of shiny coating on it, but it's not, it doesn't look intentional, if you know what I mean. It's weird. It's, it's lightly coated, I guess. So I'm just mopping up all this ink, or most of it. And um, that is, that's pretty cool. That's a nice, fun thing to have. Um, and this is what I've been doing all day. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's, you know, it's one of those things you can, if you want to add more, you can add more. You know, it, it's, you just keep going. Because as long as you dry this paper, get it wet again, no big deal, right? Now, my, my pages that I'm going to show you, I've done both sides of. Um, so... Let's uh, have a look at the colors, shall we? Um, so this is my first one, um, which I used tea dye and brushed corduroy on. So tea dye and brushed corduroy. Um, browns are great for actual distressing because, um, you know, paper generally distresses to a yellow color anyway over time. And um, also, you know, if, if something gets on it, you know, it's, it's going to get old, it's going to get moldy, it's going to look like that. So these are the colors that I would normally go to for antiquing, kind of. Um, and I did both sides, and you end up with very different results. This is not a predictable thing, really. Um, here, I think I may have changed the colors I used a little bit. Actually, this is a little bit wet. I'm not happy with that. Why is that wet? Hmm. Oh, I know why it's wet. <laughs> this is going to be interesting because I think I spilled my shot glass <laughs> on my finished work. So, yeah, this is going to be nice. It's a happy accident. Um, a little bit of extra work. See, what happened there because of the coating was that the ink got completely moved away when it was reactivated. Not completely, there is still a wash left. Same as this one. Oh dear. 
you know, I might, I might even just go back and fix this because like I say, if you draw it between layers, you can do whatever you want. So I may well go back. I mean, I'm a little bit lazy and again, not a perfectionist. So maybe, maybe not. I'm in two minds. All right, it looks like the water hasn't really gone through to these other ones. Um, so this color right here, this was done using a, a pink color called Victorian Velvet in the lovely, lovely pink color. And I used a little bit as well of the antique linen um, which is this one. I love to use these two, two. Oh, no, I used tea dye, didn't I, this time? I used the tea dye. And I've been noticing while I've been working on this that all the browns have slightly different characteristics, so they should be paired up differently than the way I was pairing them up. Um, this vintage photo is quite orangey, um, as is the brush corduroy. But the tea dye has a very cool brownish tinge to it, and so that is sort of better on its own or with other colors or with this antique linen which seems a bit more neutral um but yeah <laughs> i've learned a lot about which of these browns to use together today Let's see then i decided to throw some green into the mix so um it did get a little tiny bit muddy just around here but basically if you want to use different colors on your work like this you can either use for example, the pink on here, do all of your mopping up of the ink once you've activated it, then dry it, then start using the green. But no, I didn't do that. I just let it get muddy. So I'm not exactly following my own advice here. Um, this one was yellow. Uh, it was this scattered straw here and peacock feathers. And I just let it go green. I let it get muddy and I let it go green. That was a fun one. And then I started working with wilted violet and that peacock color, which I don't know where it went. <laughs> where are you? Who knows? Probably under here somewhere. I don't know. I always lose things, but it's it's the peacock blue anyway. Um, so that's, oh, here it is. Okay, so I used that. And that and I let them get pretty muddy so you can see here there's actually some sort of gray stripes in there where it's kind of gone all muddy but I actually like it for this style that I'm doing look at that <laughs> that was not as mixed if you see and I just kind of these marks are what it looked like when it got pulled up from the glass. So I just put it down, did not disturb it, and used the heat gun on it, and it dried in place like that, which is really cool. This one I believe I did with multiple inkings and multiple drying sessions. So it's got little dots on it and stuff. And uh, that may have been an end of the session sort of clean it up side there. And I love this one. Don't ask me how I got this to do this. I, I have no idea. It's not something you control. So I suppose my next job really is to make some nice um, coordinating um, reinforcements. Because like I said, these are not going to be just, you know, used for a day and then not needed anymore. These are going to be probably slightly more permanent parts of my diary because they're going to be my trackers and you will see that in future videos. I'm going to be putting my tracker information on these pages that I've just made here with the process I just showed you. So hope you enjoyed that and uh, if you want to do this yourself you've just seen it you just need some ink. I recommend buying two or three colors that you like that go together and uh, having a go yourself. So I've been Cy, this has been Plan With Me, and I will see you on the next one. Bye!